Good afternoon. I'm uh, Emanuele Vannacci from uh, VU Amsterdam. And this is a work in collaboration with uh, Azure Research uh, Microsoft. And uh, in the next uh, uh, 10 minutes, I want to talk about uh, how to find uh, uh, information leakage vulnerabilities enabled by exceptions in an automatic manner. And uh, in our work, we tested uh, 13 exceptions variants on four different CPUs. And uh, we found, uh, uh, we could confirm and corroborate uh, findings from uh, previous work uh, while uh, still finding uh, new leaks uh, and uh, uh, one CV. Uh, we also introduced the first uh, formal descriptions of leakage on exceptions. And why? Well, when we build software, we rely on the ISA, which hides implementation details uh, of the uh, CPU. And the CPU can contain uh, uh, speculative execution bugs enabled by uh, um, exceptions, faults, or microcode assets like uh, Meltdown, Foreshadow, MDS, and more. And this leads to uh, information leakage. So we have a tool to uh, describe the information leakage that we can expect from uh, a target CPU, uh, which uh, uh, is contract, contract for secure speculation. And uh, these, are, these are, have been already used to uh, model information leakage for specter-like vulnerabilities and uh, uh, branch misprediction. But there is uh, very little work on uh, uh, modeling and uh, describing the behavior of the CPU upon exceptions. Uh, previous work already used the contract, so it is a formal description, uh, to compare uh, uh, the execution of random programs and uh, inputs uh, on the model and uh, on the uh, CPU. So basically there is a test case generator that produces random programs and inputs. These run on both uh, the real hardware and uh, on a model, which is uh, an executable version of the contract. Um, traces are produced and uh, compared. So if the, resu if, uh, the result is that uh, uh, the CPU leaks more information than uh, what allowed by the contract, we have what is called a violation. Uh, well, what happens if we try to uh, test for exceptions? Uh, this design doesn't really work because we are missing some requirements. Um, testing uh, exceptions is uh, challenging because we need to have uh, uh, and design uh, an environment which is uh, consistent and deterministic meaning that uh, we want to trigger an exception uh, in the same way, uh, in an aligned way on both the model and the CPU. We want to have a control on the execution flow, so to redirect uh, uh, the, the execution to the faster, collect the traces, and execute the next test case. And then we have an experimental challenge, which is uh, uh, try to understand what, uh, uh, what the CPU is uh, uh, doing, which is the kind of speculation and to model the leakage in a formal way into a contract. So our goal is to uh, uh, map each uh, exception and CPU into uh, a contract that describes the information leakage expected for that CPU on that, uh, on that, uh, with that exception. So we run uh, 124 uh, fuzzing campaigns uh, for a 24 hour each, or until we find a violation, for CPUs, and we focus on uh, synchronous exceptions, so memory errors, computation errors, or code-based errors. And we tested this uh, exception and uh, our target CPU against uh, a family of contracts. So we start uh, from uh, uh, the less permissive contract, the one that does not model any uh, transient execution. Uh, then we model out of order execution and uh, we go further modeling uh, uh, value speculation. So our contract basically uh, model a CPU uh, when there is an instruction and it is false, the CPU returns a value which is used and manipulated during transient ex execution. And we have different instances of this value speculation to model uh, value forwarding or, for example, null injection. Uh, but well, we go so farther because sometimes uh, we, don't, we can't infer the value, the actual value uh, the CPU speculates on. 
Um, but we want at least to uh, identify the part or the components of the, the, of the architectural state uh, that affect uh, the speculative uh, value. So we want to, exp to have a, a contract which express uh, the dependency of the transient value uh, from the architectural state. So we can, stay, we ten, we can test the hypothesis that uh, uh, the transient value um, depends only on the uh, source operand of the faulty extraction, or we can test the hypothesis that uh, the transient value potentially uh, uh, is uh, any, any value in the architectural state. Uh, some observations from our evaluation are that uh, some exceptions act as serializing events, so they don't enable for speculation. Uh, we found uh, uh, previously reported value speculation, for example, uh, forwarding from the L1 cache or from different microarchitectural buffers. And the key observation is that for, uh, for some exceptions, like uh, divide error, or when we have a, a division overflow or a division by zero, we cannot really uh, infer the value which uh, the CPU uh, returns and uses in the transient execution. Uh, so we also found uh, some new leaks. Uh, a couple of these are variants of already known uh, vulnerabilities, but uh, for the time that uh, remains, uh, I will uh, focus on the divider state sampling uh, that affect uh, uh, MD, Zen Plus architecture. So uh, let's uh, look for a minute at this piece of code. Uh, we first have uh, at line one some division uh, that stores the results and uh, registers RDX, RAX. Then we have some computations, so the registers are manipulated. We store zero in RCX at line two, and then we have a division by zero. So at line three, we are trying to divide uh, the content of RDX, RAX by zero. So uh, line four should not execute, but actually the CPU execute uh, line four uh, in, a, in a transient way. So the ghost there means that uh, the, the instruction is uh, uh, speculatively executed. So the question now is, what, uh, what, are, what are we leaking? What's inside RDX? Um, based on previous work, we can assume that the CPU uh, at line three, when there is a default, uh, fill uh, uh, returns the value zero. So uh, at line four, we are basically uh, leaking uh, the uh, value at address, I mean, the address zero. When we test this hypothesis, we find a violation, and a violation looks like this in our tool. So we, we get a report where we uh, cannot observe the contract trace. Uh, so basically here we are running our program on different inputs. Uh, these inputs, they produce, uh, this, these executions produce the same contract trace, but the hardware trace are actually different. So each dot is a cache line. When there is a cap, it means that during, during execution, that cache line has been filled. So we can observe that uh, during uh, the execution of the CPU, we have uh, uh, some mismatch. We, we have different uh, traces, while the contract trace is the same, meaning that uh, our model is, model is not uh, describing the information leakage uh, in the correct way. We are missing some, something. Actually, we are not leaking zero. So we tested the, the next hypothesis, which is, uh, well, maybe RDX uh, is not zero, but it depends on the uh, source operands of the faulty extraction. So here we are leaking uh, the uh, operands of the extraction at line three. Again, we got uh, a violation. So the only hypothesis we could still uh, uh, test is that uh, at line four, we are leaking uh, potentially any value from the architectural state. So we are in the MDS world. And of course, this uh, uh, contract is uh, uh, not violated, meaning that we are uh, uh, describing uh, the correct amount of information leakage, but under, after uh, further investigation, we found that uh, actually, uh, the, what we are leaking at line four uh, depends on previous uh, uh, division instruction. So uh, the instruction at uh, um, line three falls for a division by zero, divide by zero error, and the CPU returns into uh, the uh, transit value uh, something that depends on the operand of the uh, instruction at uh, um, 
line one. So basically, we are leaking uh, and we are breaking uh, confidentiality. So the good news is that in the uh, previous days, uh, uh, there have been some discussion in the Linux community. A patch has been already landed. We will we'll read about this uh, in the next days and weeks, I guess. So to summarize, um, in our work, we built several uh, speculation contracts uh, for exceptions. Um, we built also a tool to test this contract uh, against the real hardware and the CPUs, CPUs. Uh, we found uh, uh, analyzed violations. We tried to infer the uh, information leakage and refine in an iterative process our models. And uh, we demonstrated our approach uh, by finding known and new leaks. So the paper is online. I'm here for questions. <laughs>